Redotrutide or terzepatide, which one should you be taking? Let's talk about it. Hey folks, just a quick reminder, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I'm not an educator. This is entirely for entertainment purposes only. You shouldn't listen to anything I have to say. Definitely don't do anything that I did. I can only speak for myself and personal experience. Make sure that you listen to your doctors and your WHO overlords. That's it. Let's get to the video. Now, if you clicked on this video, you probably know what terzepatide is. You know what redditrutide is. If you've been online at all in the fitness space, bodybuilding, peptides, biohacking, anything like that, absolutely everybody, everybody is pushing redditrutide. It's like the second coming. It's the greatest thing ever. Everybody should be on it. Whether you have barely any fat on you and you just kind of lose that last 2% or you're morbidly obese and you need to start losing some weight, everybody should be on Reddit. But is that true? I don't personally think so. And honestly, the reason why everybody is pushing it right now, it's because they're usually selling it themselves or they have an affiliate code and they can charge more for Reddit than anything else. And there's quite a bit of margin to be made on that. And so because it's so profitable, to be selling it as a research chemical for research purposes only, not for you to be taking personally, everybody is pushing it. But is it your best option? Now, I'm not gonna go over the history and the chemical makeup and all that, but terzepatide is the GLP-1 or the glucagon-like peptide one that's in semaglutide. And they added a second component, which is the glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, which is really difficult to say very quickly. Sometimes it's known as the gastric inhibitory polypeptide. But essentially, once they added that component in there, you no longer just get the weight loss that you get with semaglutide. With the addition of the GIP component, you get better insulin control, better insulin sensitivity, better nutrient partitioning. You no longer just waste away like you did with semaglutide, but now you have a component that can actually help you maintain some muscle mass and maintain bone strength so you don't just get osteoporosis like some people are getting with semaglutide. We'll talk about that here in a second. There's a reason for that. Now with retitrutide, you got the GLP-1, you got the GIP. They also added glucagon receptor agonism. So with that third component, you get increased energy expenditure, enhanced fat burning, and a reduction of hepatic fat or fat around the liver. So it seems like you get everything with Reda that you get with trizepatide, but when you actually take it, they feel completely different. So here's my typical thought process. I have an insatiable appetite. If you sit down at a restaurant with me, I can order appetizers, a main course, a salad, and then still have room for dessert. I can pound down 4,000, 5,000 calories very easily. Do I feel that great when I leave the restaurant? Of course not, but I can eat. I can eat and eat. And that signal that, hey, you've eaten enough, you probably don't need to eat anymore. I don't have that. I can just keep going. I keep going until I start to feel sick. And really it is until it starts to kind of come up before I go, uh, I'm gonna slow down. A couple of hours later, I could probably go back for something sweet. That's just the way I'm built. Now for me, terzepatide is a far superior compound. Its appetite suppression is fantastic. Upon initially taking it, you still wanna eat, you still wanna sit down, but when you start to eat, you fill up extremely fast. And so after a while and after weeks of taking it, you start to lose a little bit of that interest in just stuffing yourself because it's two or three bites and then you're like, you're done. You just don't wanna eat anymore. After some time, that food noise goes away. You just don't feel like going into the fridge. You know what it feels like to eat. You just fill up really quick and it just doesn't seem that interesting to you anymore. And that's all the time. Restaurant, at home, healthy food, unhealthy food, it doesn't matter. Now with Retta, that's not the case at all. The appetite suppression is just not nearly as strong as with terzepatide. Now, if you're someone that has never taken any of these compounds and you're completely sensitive to them, the first time you take Retta, you probably will get good appetite suppression and it'll probably work great for you. So if you're completely fresh and new, Retta kind of makes sense, hypothetically. 
of course. But switching from Terz to Reta makes absolutely no sense. It doesn't. Because everything that works really well in Terz, you're not going to get it with Reta. And instead, you're going to lose some of that appetite suppression. And all of a sudden, you're going to start going back and start eating and eating and eating. You're going to see some weight gain. Now, if you're already lean, already disciplined, and you just need to lose that extra last little bit, yeah, Reta makes sense, especially if you've never taken any of these compounds. It's your first time and you just need to lose a little bit. Yeah, Reta is going to help you. But if you're obese and you need to go from 40% body fat down, for me, Terzepatide was so much better than Reta. Now, a few mistakes I see people make with Reta is they start to microdose it. Now, Terzepatide works really well to microdose. You take it three times a week in small doses. And so you maintain that appetite suppression all week long where they typically prescribe it in one big bulbous dose up front. And that works really well for about five days, but by that sixth or seventh day, that food noise starts to come back, especially when you first start taking it. But when you microdose it and you split it up into smaller doses, you maintain that appetite suppression all the time. Reda doesn't seem to work that well microdosing it. So in Reda, I can take a big bulbous dose at the beginning of the week. I'll get some appetite suppression from it because I'm taking so much up front. And yeah, you'll lose some of that towards the end of the week. But while you're on Reda, you can still eat. You don't get stuffed as quickly as you do on Terz. Terz just completely shuts you down. You just don't eat. Which leads me to some of the mistakes people make. The only reason why you're seeing people losing bone mass, losing muscle, getting that gaunt ozempic face while they're on semaglutide is because they're not eating. They eat garbage. They ate garbage to get fat. They continue to eat garbage. They just eat less garbage. They don't prioritize protein. They're not doing any resistance training. And so their garbage diets of just less garbage leaves them looking like that. And they lose bone mass. They lose muscle mass and they feel terrible. You jump over to terzepatide and you do get some increased nutrient partitioning from the terzepatide, but you still have to prioritize protein. And because you slow gastric emptying, you also need to focus on fermented foods, fiber, just anything that'll keep your intestines working properly. Because otherwise you will get stopped up pretty quickly if you're just packing down protein. But you still need to prioritize that protein. You need to get as much protein in as you can. Although you can eat very little, you need to focus in on getting that one gram per pound of body weight or at least one gram per pound of lean body mass. And then the other thing is resistance training is absolutely critical. You have to maintain your muscle mass and your bone strength while you're losing weight. And this is true of any diet. You start to cut calories back and the deeper you get into a cut, the more calories you take out of your diet, you're going to lose muscle mass. You're going to lose bone density unless you're doing resistance training. That'll stop that entirely. But people don't do that. They think they can just take this shot and then that's it. Nothing else to do. You're just going to eat less. You're going to lose weight and everything's great. Well, no. That works to a certain point, especially if you're huge. You've got so much weight to move around, that's going to maintain some of that muscle mass and that bone density. But as you start to get thinner and thinner and thinner, there's just less mass of you to move around. And so you've got to go in and do some resistance training and you have to prioritize protein. Lastly, you have the people that stall out. I see this all the time. People that are on the highest dose of terzepatide. And they want to jump over to Reta. And they think that, it, well, if I just jump to a different compound, I'm going to be able to start losing weight again. The only reason why you're not losing weight on Terzepatide, no matter the dose, is that you're eating too much. That's it. You're eating too much. Too many calories. That's it. You're not moving enough. You're eating too much. And the appetite suppression from whatever dose you happen to be on of Terzepatide or anything else is not enough to maintain that calorie deficit. So what would make someone more successful is when they get on terzepatide, yeah, those first 10, 20, 30 pounds, depending on how big you are, are going to come off really, really quickly and very easily. But eventually you do need to move towards counting your calories. You need to start tracking what you eat. You need to weigh everything. You need to start getting on a regimented diet. If you get on a regimented diet, you're going to ensure that you eat enough protein and you're going to make sure that you continue your weight loss or at least your fat loss, because you're going to be able to cut down your calories as you lose weight. 
eventually you hit an equilibrium. That's just the way it works. You may cut down your calories to whatever, 1800 calories a day, but eventually you lose enough weight that 1800 calories becomes your maintenance. So you need to cut more. It needs to be down to 1700 calories or 1600 calories, or you need to move more, add extra steps. That's a healthier option. If you're only walking 6,000 steps, bump it up to 10. If you're already walking 10,000 steps, which you're probably not, but if you are, then you bump it up to 12,500 or 15,000 steps. The added movement will burn those extra calories off and you'll continue your weight loss. So don't jump from one compound to another thinking that's going to fix it. It's not only reason why anyone loses weight on any of these compounds is because they are in a calorie deficit. That's the only thing that will ensure continued weight loss. So. If you have an insatiable appetite, you just cannot eat enough. You constantly go back to the fridge. Any snack will do. Terzepatide for me was a far superior compound. If however, you have fatty liver disease, you're already pretty lean and you just want to lose a little bit of extra fat, or you're completely fresh to any of these compounds, then Retta might be the smarter choice. Which one have you tried? What has been your experience? Leave your comments below. Make sure you like and share the video, subscribe to the channel for more and click the link in the descriptions, but don't do anything I tell you. Again, this was for entertainment purposes only, but make sure you click on those links. Okay, bye.